Welcome to the Busy Guy Show. My name is Vince Lacasio, and I'm a busy guy. I have two very busy ladies here, and I mean it when I say it. Pam Saul and Donna Zerkowski, better known as Donna Z. And they are the owners of Keller Williams Chicago O'Hare and also have a sales team signature plus. Thank you, Vince, very much for having us. It is truly my pleasure. Thanks Thank for you, being Vince. Here, ladies. I know over the years you've got uh, many years of experience, at least 20 years uh, each. Uh, Pam, if you want to tell me maybe first, how did you get into the industry? And yes, uh, Vince, I started in real estate with a builder first and learned a lot about the business um, inside of development and then transitioned over to a brokerage and then worked my way up in through administration and taking care of transactions for our agents and then became of the age of 21 to get my real estate license and then went into actual real estate sales. Nice. And Donna? I started in real estate back in 1998 and um, my family came from real estate so it was always a passion of mine. They were investors and, and multifamily units and um, been in real estate now going on 19 years and love every moment of it. And you're with uh, Keller Williams which is a not only a national but an international company. If you want to tell me you know, a little bit about the company. I know there's a lot to tell but a little bit of a synopsis about it. Yes, we have a, wow, our company is global now. We have 166,000 agents around the world. And what that does for everyone within our organization is it's, we can help people globally. And that's, that's with real estate, we also know they may have a need here in Chicago or the suburbs, but also may have a need outside of Chicago and the suburbs. And through our company, we're able to leverage for our agent world partners and our team members being able for our agents with our organization to do business actually anywhere around the globe, whether it's residential, commercial, luxury, or international. Which is great for somebody relocating. Yes. Absolutely. Or looking to do multiple investments, building their portfolio in different areas. Uh, just um, tell me a little bit about when you say it's a, sign or it's a signature plus team. Uh, what does that exactly mean? You've got just the two of you or you have a whole group of people working with you? So uh, Donna and I partnered up back in 2002 and it was groundbreaking at that time to have two women especially come together as a real estate team. There were some married couples that were real estate teams. Um, outside of that, really not a lot of realtors understood or knew the model of a real estate team. Uh, Donna and I decided to do a team because we knew the importance of serving our clients at a higher level and that with two of us and adding to our team we would be able to do that and service our clients and more of them in addition and really grow it into the business that it is. So a real estate team will mean that you'll have several realtors under one umbrella inside of the team as well and then some additional administration help as well. Okay, and being in the industry, uh, both of you, at least 20 years, there's n n not a word that more comes to mind as changes. Uh, I don't know if you want to start, maybe just talk about financial trends, about you know how 2008 changed everything. Um, if you want to elaborate on that a little bit. Sure, so 2008 uh, was a very scary time inside of real estate and um, the mortgage industry. We had a lot of uh, regulations that um, came down that, that were needed at that time because of some predatory lending that was happening. Um, so the consumer confidence in 2008 was very low because nobody knew where to turn. And so there wasn't a whole lot of real estate transactions at that time. And there was a lot of uh, fixing that needed to happen on the mortgage side of our industry, um, which then did take place Unfortunately, we had a lot of homeowners that were in adjustable rate mortgages that could no longer afford the property. Those adjustable rate mortgages were coming due and they didn't qualify to begin with and so now they were losing their home. So that caused a lot of our short sales and foreclosures and that brought us basically through 2012 to 13, 14, we started really coming out of that. So it took that long for us to cycle through that so that stress it, yeah. it's corrected itself i mean we're at 2017 now things seem seem to be very good right now um let me ask you a question for inventory after 2008 happened 
there was more foreclosures in the house, there was less construction, and almost came to a virtual stop. I'm not an expert, but I'm just, you know, from reading, that's what happened. Yes. How's the inventory now? I mean, what's going on? A lot more construction? Yeah, inventory um, has, has increased. So typically when our inventory increases, then uh, builders and developers will start building again in addition. So we have, uh, we have noticed a lot of the new construction market coming back to the market. It hasn't come back as, as well as it did previous to all of that. Um, however, inventory uh, is definitely up and consumer confidence is there. And still, Vince, historically, our interest rates are an all-time low. Mm -hmm. So in addition to interest rates and where they're at, combined with the affordability of our pricing, it's a wonderful time to still get into real estate and buy property. If you look at the market back in 07 and 08 when the market did crash, the interest rates were up there in the 7% tile. Now when we can get mortgages in the fours and Threes. threes and five it, it, it varies per the individual and what the what type of program they're looking at but even just that change in the interest rate increases the affordability and if you look at as Pam was stating the the last hundred years of real estate right now is the most opportune time buy versus rent and what you're paying in your payments I know I've I've had a few conversations with some first-time home buyers just in this last week and they said my gosh I was just able to get approved for a home for twelve hundred and thirty three dollars versus the rent that I'm paying right now for fifteen hundred dollars so it, it's a, an extreme opportune time now um, with interest rates and affordability great do, is, a, is there a, a quote or a phrase or a philosophy that, that it's always a good time to buy right I mean if the, if the rates are high you buy and then when they come yep. down you refinance it's a great question <laughs> so I have a lot of clients ask me that question Pam when is the right time the honest answer is when you're ready so you really want to just look at where your goals are what's going on inside of your life that causes or you know is giving you motivation to move you know purchase another property or sell so it's really when you're ready is really the best time nice yeah. Uh, another change uh, over time, and it's usually to correct things, but uh, environmental is, uh, you know, something that's come into play that it didn't used to. You know, people were buying buildings that were on top of gas stations, whatever the case may be. But what can you tell me now about environmental inspections and what people should expect when they're buying a home? So we would always, as a realtor, we'd always highly recommend that every home buyer does a home inspection. And as a home seller, you can do a pre-home inspection, so then that way you can prepare your home to put it on the market and make it a little bit more attractive because you've already done your pre-inspection and you know that your home um, is in good shape and, and your buyer shouldn't have any concerns. As a home buyer, we always encourage the buyer to do a home inspection. Um, that is something that the it's home- It's not law. It is not a totally law. It's not an option. It's not, yeah, it's an option. Um, it is something that the home buyer does pay for once they go under contract and if they find anything wrong with the home that no longer makes it a good purchase for them per the contract they would be able to cancel out of that purchase and be able to move on to the next property so it's it's a good protection and something that you should do no matter what because okay. we go through homes fence day in and day out and what we can see with the latent you know, right there with our own eyes and as we're walking buyers on through. With a home inspector, they can go up into the attics, they can check things that we cannot do, unscrew um, electric panels to see what's going on with wiring, etc. There's a lot, everything can look pretty on the outside. Sometimes it, it takes that little internal to, to kind of see what's going on on the backside. And just with everything we want to make sure that our our clients are have a full understanding of what they're getting themselves into so there's not surprises so when they yeah. do purchase the home they can best sleep at night and i think what you're saying donna too it's an educational process for the buyer in addition so it's a very valuable process to go through as far as environmental concerns um, one of the inspections that we see more often now that maybe we didn't see in the years past is a radon inspection. 
So radon is basically gas in the Earth's dirt. We're breathing it in all the time. The issue is that if it's at 4.0 or higher, then it's a dangerous level of radon. And at that moment, you would want to install a radon mitigation system into that home. Now, if you're the home buyer doing a radon inspection at the time of purchase, mm -hmm. you have a better opportunity in potentially having the seller install that system at their own cost because now that they're aware that there's radon in their home, they have to disclose that to the next buyer. So it's always in the buyer's best interest to do a home inspection and radon inspection at the time of the home purchase because it can give you some leverage. But you said it can factor. be corrected. Or it can be corrected. And energy. for very, very reasonable, too. I think when people hear of the word radon gas, radon gas is everywhere. And um, it's and even in buildings that we're sitting in right now. It's, it's, it's within the earth. It's, it's, that it's, it's in the layer and it comes up. It's just a matter of the d systems and the plates of how much radon gas is emitting into each dwelling that we're all standing in. The great news is, is that the mitigation systems, especially for homes, we've seen on average of anywhere, it could be anywhere from, anywhere from 800 up to about $2,000. It's, it's not overwhelming and now there's protection of knowing that their families can not Relax have to ingest and, and, and not ingest this, this gas that you can't, there's, you, you can't smell it there's no taste the only way is to do this radon test so it is important because right now it as they say it's one of the leading causes of lung cancer as well so you know we just want to be mindful with our out, right? with everybody and, and it, it's a it's a simple fix well, and you I think touched that's on a good point thing. too about uh, wiring I mean it, it, if anything the inspection comes on to safety you know yes moving in the house got faulty wires Always. that you don't know about the inspector finds that for you, he's going to save your family's life. I mean, that's what it's Yeah, if I could add concern. one more thing, Vince. Please. As a homeowner, so even if you aren't selling your home, and you currently own a home, I would encourage any of the homeowners out there to also do a radon inspection for their current home. That's great advice. I mean, yeah. Uh, I know with public buildings, uh, once again, I'm not an expert, but the American Disabilities Act. So. Um, we talked about it earlier. It's not a law for homes, but it can be helpful. You said you could help find uh, homes for people that do need something, that already has something like that. Absolutely. We have um, obviously some sellers that already have um, had individuals that had um, disabilities where they were in wheelchairs, so they needed the extra wide doorways of at least 36 inches to move around. and. Um, sometimes you know stairs ramps etc so there are many of homes that we can find for those individuals that are looking for for those that have special needs and um, in a normal in a, in a normal home situation we have to take it case by case and 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 see what could be best but the great news is is for any any individual that does have a disability we can suit those needs. I, I've actually helped people that were blind before, and we've really had to walk through footprints of the home and, and, and their feelings so they could feel comfortable on and having that understanding of what's going on. So we're, we're there to help service that everybody. Great. That's great. I think what's great about that is our technology now allows us to identify those opportunities for those homes. So in the old days, when we first started in real estate 20 years back, <laughs> we used to have these big listing books that all the <laughs> listings would get dumped into, and then all the realtors would have access to on a daily basis. We would know what our client's uh, criteria is, run to the books, try and find the new property, call the uh, buyer and say, hey, we have one or two new properties, let's go view them. In today's world, it's very different because of technology, which mm -hmm. is great, because like Donna was talking about, we can actually sort through different criteria, whether it's for a disability or it's a school and or just criteria that's going to really suit school that family's well. needs. Mm -hmm. We're able to really sort through that data, you know, um, more effectively and really bring our buyer or our client truly what it is that they're looking for. So we can weed out all the rest of the properties and focus in on the ones that are really going to be a potential candidate for them and their family. So it's helping seller and buyer. One a thousand percent. That's all it is. It's helping everybody. Now we're talking segue about technology. <laughs> Led right into it. Beautiful. <laughs> but that that I mean, every industry has changed because of it. Yes. And I think uh, 
you tell me, real estate probably more than any industry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a thousand percent. We, we also at Keller Williams have what's called a mobile app. So inside of this mobile app, we're able to access any property, anytime. So whether it's here locally in Chicago or the suburbs, as Donna was mentioning earlier, because we're a global wide company and we're international, we can access all properties available anytime, anywhere. So literally the buyers and sellers in today's market have access to every single property available at any time, mm -hmm. which as the consumer, now they're more educated. So on average, Vince, a buyer will look, will look online for a home for about 18 months prior to contacting a realtor. Once they contact the realtor to have them take the mound, start showing them homes, that process could take them another four to six months. So let's just call it about two years. So two years, it may take a buyer um, before they finally purchase a home and go under contract, which means that buyer is very educated. They very. understand the market at a very high level. So by the time they get to you, they've been in the house with a virtual tour. They have know as much as they can. Actually, 87% of all buyers right now have looked online before they actually contact a realtor. Yeah, and it's for so about 18 it, it, months. It really is. And this is why um, photography, seeing who you're aligning yourself up with and who's going to give your representation, whether you're listing your home or whether you're purchasing your home, is extremely important. And, 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 and who's driving their, that company's technology and what does that look like? As an example, the mobile app that Pam was stating, ours will GPS anywhere in all 50 states. So any place where our, uh, any of our consumers are standing that has our mobile app, I don't care if they're in Florida, in Naperville, in Streeterville, up in Wilmette, or uh, you know, down in Orland Park, if they see a, a real estate sign, they just hit nearby homes and it auto populates the listing right there so they could see the price. And the great news is, is if it's something that they like, they can hit of interest, contact agent, and the contact agent, they get the professional to take them out to go nice. and see and it. Technology, I mean, another just as an example, people looking uh, that even haven't had the kids yet are looking at schools. Absolutely. Yes. It's, a, it's the most important thing right now for a lot of individuals. Um, what... Uh, uh, we talked about finance, but loans now, um, that's another thing. People could, you know, apply for loans on, on their phone. I mean, yeah, you know. Not a bad thing, pre but. Previously, most of the way was that a new home buyer or a home buyer would just go to their local bank. You know, that's what they would, that would be one of the primary options. And in today's world, they have several options. There are several companies out there um, that allow the consumer buyer to apply online. They never really even necessarily meet that loan officer directly. However, these are professionals that know how to take them through the loan process step by step, and yet all of this is done online with technology. Why is that an advantage? It allows the buyer to know exactly where they're at as far as pricing for monthly payment versus taxes, interest rate, and it helps them really zero in on what properties are gonna be the best candidate for them because we could take all of those numbers and that criteria and plug it into the areas of interest and really make sure that we're aligning that buyer up with the right area as far as affordability for whatever their financing um, results are. What I would like to add, Pam, though, is, is that truly we, we'd like to offer at least these consumers are speaking with at least three mortgage representatives so that they can understand. So if they want to try an online source and, and, and find out what that best rate is, that's fabulous. Whatever program is going to work best for them, however, we do recommend them speaking with three professionals so this way they can have an understanding because with what one bank may do for one consumer on their credit, another bank may be able to do something a little bit different. So we cannot just say it, it's not apples with apples and it's not oranges with oranges. Each individual's needs are all separate and each individual bank can have different programs or lenders can have different programs to suit their needs. So 
we really advise always to, you know, we have preferred lenders that we work with day in and day out that we know that are doing business at a high level. And, and with our consumers, we really shop, advocate to say for them to shop around so they can have all of the knowledge to support on what's going of, of what's going to be best for them and in, in, yeah. in their situation. You use the word recommend and suggest, but what about, um, is it almost not an unwritten rule, but you want people to be pre-qualified be before they're going to go look at how you can look? The importance for the buyer to be pre-approved before they start looking for a home is it positions them competitively. So what I mean by that is, is that, so Vince, you and I agree to work with each other. You're my buyer and you say, Pam, I'm looking for this great three bedroom, two bath home in this specific area at this price point. And when you're pre-approved, it allows us to physically go look at that home and be able to put an offer in on that property that day. Because of all the technology, we're gonna be able to zero in on those few homes that really match your criteria to a T and then also position us to be able to put in an offer immediately. Because more than likely if the property is priced right and it's at a great value, mm -hmm. everyone else is gonna also be putting an offer in on it at that exact time. And if we don't have that pre-approval ready to go, the seller may not view you as the buyer as someone that is a good candidate for them to go under contract with versus another buyer who has the pre-approval. So it's really an important part for stop. the buyer. It's the first yeah. stop. It's a, it honestly is the first step to even taking the whole process because this is where we can understand a little bit more of, there's a lot just involved. It's not just the home. There's taxes, there's insurance. There's a lot that comes into play with the home buying process. So the, the mortgage professional, the mortgage broker, sits down with the individual and, and looks at what they're making, what they owe on their different credit cards, et cetera, what, what it costs to live their life. And then in addition, when we take on the cost of a home, what the taxes are within the home, what we're looking at for interest and also insurance, all of those become a part of the whole entire package. And we just want to make sure that consumers really have their uh, everything wrapped around it so they have an understanding of what 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 well, they're it doing. saves everybody time too right I mean if I come to you and I say I'm, I'll give you a million dollars for the house and they say great now go get the loan right and Absolutely. in the meantime you let two people go that had the money or the right offer or right price the other thing I'd add to that is there's different types of loans so there's FHA financing which is a governmentally insured loan there's conventional financing and then there's also what's called a 203K, which is like a renovation loan. So when I consult with our buyers as a realtor, what we're looking to do is identify what could be the best option for them inside of those different loan options. So very often we may have one buyer that qualifies for three different types of loans, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing for the buyer. At the end, they're only gonna go with one loan, but it allows us to shop through more inventory. So for example, with FHA, there's certain conditional requirements for the property that uh, the property um, has to have in place in order to get the financing. And so we may find the right property, but it may not pass FHA. However, if I have that same buyer pre-approved for conventional or renovation loan, mm -hmm. then we can just jump to that type of loan and still have that house as one of our potential properties, you know, for us to put an offer in on. So it actually positions the buyer even more competitively where they have all options available as far as property and property condition based on the type of loan. Very, very educational. Um, we're going to be running short on time here, but this is a big one. The big question is, I, I want to sell my own house, but I don't want to pay somebody a commission. What's uh, for sale by owner? What are the pros and the cons of using a realtor? Uh, the biggest advantage of using a realtor is, is that our network, as far as how many prospective buyers we can reach, will always outweigh what a potential for sale by owner can bring in on their own. When you're looking to sell your home, part of our strategy is to bring you as many buyers as possible and to do that in such a way where we create an auction effect and we get them all there at once. So if I can open you up to 100 buyers versus only 20 buyers, 
the opportunity for you as a for sale by owner to sell that property for a higher value, a higher price, obviously has increased tremendously. So it's being able to bring more buyers and being able to network inside of that and then creating a little bit more of that sense of urgency because you have more people looking at the property. The statistic too is, is that unfortunately only about 12% of the for sale by owners actually sell on their own. They end up listing with a realtor. Is it 12, 12%? It is 12, and that's a National Association of uh, Real Estate Statistic. And, and so with that, what ends up happening is they, they work their best to, to do it on their own at first. And, and I get that. Listen, I, we want to make the, everybody the most money. That, that's our job as realtors, mm -hmm. to, 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 to help them um, sell or find the property in, with, in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of hassle for the best price possible to whomever that is, whether that's the buyer or the seller. And so when we can drive more traffic to a listing versus a for sale by owner having a sign in the yard and maybe putting it up on the MLS and very minimal um, internet standards, they don't realize when they sign on these sites that, the, that even the exposure that they get with a national brand versus a fee simple brand and, and getting advertised, it really hurts them in the end. And so to be perfectly honest, when they list with a realtor, the, the statistic is they actually make more in the end. And Realtor is a, a national organization. Yes. Right? Yes. And each, and people get licensed by, uh, by the state. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, you get licensed by the state. And um, um, Let me ask you, uh, just and it, like I said, it's, 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 to ask you to answer a question like this, you know, briefly, it's not fair, but <laughs> I'm a buyer, I'm selling my house, what's the typical uh, scenario? I call a Realtor. Yeah, if you're looking to sell your home, um, definitely you want to reach out to several different realtors. Like with the lenders, we always encourage our buyers to talk to at least three. So I would also encourage any seller out there thinking of selling well, your home. I respect home, that that you say that. Yeah, they mm -hmm. should talk to, to more than one. You know, if you can do three, fantastic. And the reason why, it's the biggest financial decision you're going to make. Whoa. And. We're out of time, aren't we? Vince? Well, we're getting close, but you can keep going. <laughs> okay. It's the biggest financial uh, transaction you'll ever make, so you owe it to yourself as a seller to make sure that you're interviewing the best of the best and that you have clarity on those questions you're going to ask that agent. And more so than anything, look at track record. And then for the buyer, same, pretty much same thing, contact and you contact can Contact the realtor, and they will take you through the process. This has been probably the most <laughs> educational, educa I can't even say the word, educational show I've ever had. I want to say thank you. Here's the cannoli. Oh, my gosh. We love the cannoli. What are you doing? I think I got to go. Yeah. I, I have a buyer or seller to go take care of. You what? know what, Vince? On my show. Yeah. You know, I'm a busy girl. Oh, and, my gosh. Uh, here we go. I think oh. I'm just going to say, just stay wow. sold. Oh, wow, God. just stay sold. All right, Bye. well, thanks for being on the show, these busy girls. You too? I got to go, sweetie. Well, I have no idea. It's our well, those were the busy girls. They're off oh, going see, out to the real really estate industry. Yeah, I mean it when I say that. It was very educational. Thank you, Donna, for being here. Oh, my gosh, Vince. We right. appreciate okay. today. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful day. All right, thank you. Thank you.